It happened that on that morning, the sun came out bright, and the air was calm, giving promise of a warm day. As the time for the great final struggle drew near, Harold's mind was oppressed more and more with a sense of anxiety and with foreboding fears. Upon the summit of a rock near the shore, there sat the woman of gigantic stature mounted on a wolf. The wolf had in his jaws a human body dripping with blood, which he was engaged in devouring as he came along. The woman gave the wolf another victim after he devoured the first. Another of these ominous dreams was the following. There sat the figure of a female, with a stern and ferocious countenance, and a drawn sword in her hand. She was busy counting the ships, pointing at them as she counted with her sword. She seemed a sort of fiend of destruction, and she called out to the birds to encourage them to go. Go, said she, without fear. We shall have abundance of prey, I am going too. For ten long hours there reigned over the whole field, one widespread scene of havoc and death. Every soul among all those countless thousands, delivered up to the supreme dominion of the most dreadful passions, excited to the perfect frenzy of hatred, rage and revenge, and all either mercilessly killing others, or dying themselves in agony and despair. When night came, the Normans were everywhere victorious, leaping their horses over the bodies of the dead and dying which covered the ground. Those of King Harold's followers that had escaped the slaughter of the day fled in hopeless confusion toward the north. The bodies of men who sank down on the way, spent with the wounds or exhausted by fatigue. In the morning, William marshaled his men on the field, and called over the names of the officers and men as they had been registered in Normandy for the purpose of ascertaining who were killed. While this melancholy ceremony was going on, two monks came in, sent from the remains of the English army, and saying that King Harold was missing, and that it was rumoured that he had been slain. If so, his body must be lying somewhere, they said, upon the field, and they wished for permission to make search for it. The permission was granted, with the aid of some soldiers, they began to explore the ground, turning over and examining every lifeless form which, by the dress or the armour, might seem to be possibly the king's. Their search was for a long time vain. The ghastly faces of the dead were so mutated and changed that nobody could be identified. At length, however, a woman who had been Harold's family and knew his person more intimately than they found and recognised the body, and the monks and the soldiers carried it away. The Battle of Hastings sealed and settled the controversy in respect to the English crown. William advanced to London, fortified himself there. He was crowned at length at Westminster Abbey, with great pomp and parade. He confiscated the property of all the English nobles who had fought against him, and divided it among the Norman chieftains who had aided him in the invasion. In a word, 
he became in the course of a few years after he landed, one of the greatest and most powerful potentates on the globe. Yeah. <laughs> 